G'day Starlo here. How good's this? Another hub. A lot of you have been asking for us to bring them back and with the silly season now largely behind us, we thought we'd dive in and do another hub stream for you. And it's a really special one tonight because we've partnered up with Ozfish Unlimited to bring you an episode simply entitled Better Fishing. And I'm pretty sure that's something that we all strive for. But some of you are probably asking, what is Ozfish Unlimited? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Ozfish is Australia's fastest growing fishing conservation organization with over 50 chapters spread right across the country, dedicated to protecting and restoring fish habitat in all waterways, salt, brackish, and fresh. Ozfish's philosophy is pretty simple. Take care of the habitat, and the fish will look after themselves. They've got a bunch of ambitious habitat programs running right now, including the amazing Seeds for Snapper project in Western Australia and South Australia. This is the largest community-driven marine habitat restoration effort in the country, aimed at collecting seagrass seeds and replanting them in strategic locations. This year alone, Ozfish volunteers have collected over 1.4 million seagrass seeds and replanted them. The expanded seagrass beds produced by these efforts will equate to lots more snapper and other species well into the future. Another awesome Ozfish project is the Shellfish Revolution that's going on in Brisbane's Moreton Bay. This aims to drop 50,000 oyster baskets to build reefs, improve water quality and create more fish habitat, which of course equals more fish. The oyster shells come from local restaurants and they all need to be washed and sorted by volunteers, including local schools before they're deployed. What an amazing community effort that is. Then there's the waterway fire science and bushfire recovery effort in New South Wales and Victoria with an army of volunteers replanting trees and other vegetation along waterways that were impacted by the Black Summer fires a couple of years ago. Now that's just three of many projects that are currently underway. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about Ozfish Unlimited, make sure you go and have a look at both their Facebook page and their website and think about ways that you might be able to become involved. It could be something as simple as rounding up your next purchase at a participating BCF store to donate towards Ozfish, or you could join up as a paying member, or you could even become involved hands-on yourself in some of those great projects. It's a wonderful way to help Habitat and create more fish. But you know, the concept of fishing sustainably so that future generations can keep catching fish is nothing particularly new. And one of the people who pioneered it was our very own Rex Hunt. And right now, we're going to go back and look at one from the archives, a TV segment from the Rex Hunt fishing adventure days when Rex was promoting the idea of kissing them and letting them go. And really, that was the first time that a whole generation of Australians had become involved in letting a few of the fish that they could have kept go. And that's really caught on. And we're gonna talk about that quite a bit tonight. But just before we go to the Rex Hunt Show, I wanna tell you that we've got a great competition on tonight. We've got a $100 gift voucher at BCF, Boating, Camping, Fishing Stores, all around Australia. You can spend it at any one of those stores if you happen to win it. And we've got 10 consolation prizes of Ozfish Unlimited hats and buffs to give away. But the answer to the question that I'll be asking right at the end of the show is contained in one of the segments. So you'll need to watch fairly closely. It might even be this one with Rex. Okay, over to you, Rexy. G'day folks, thanks for joining us again. Welcome to the Northern Territory of Australia in magnificent Kakadu. <laughs> Bearded burglar, he's in his element. <laughs> Threw it into his mouth. Unbelievable, mate. It's just like nature. It's what we're all about. I tell you what, I tell you. <laughs> this is just fantastic. Wagons, oh, oh. Thank your mother for the rabbits. Just when they think it's safe to come out. Oh, it's not a Bang. <laughs> I guess in the end, that's probably why we all go fishing.
Barra had a go at that tiny little lure, folks. We'll get him later on in the show, I hope. Welcome to magnificent Kakadu, and I'm here with Darwin Recreational Fisheries Officer Phil Hall. And this is part of the East Alligator System. And Phil, quite amazingly, they call this the Rock Pool. <laughs> it's one of the prettiest places you're likely to see, Rex. My missus said to me on the phone last night to bring her up here again. Now, that is a very, very good indication that this is a nice place. We're here to have a look at the scenery, and I'm sure the folks at home are going to have a good time. But we're also here to do a little bit of uh, piscatorial hunting uh, in brackets fishing. You bet. I think we might go and have a look at some logs down the bottom end of the rock hole there. They normally produce a few fish, and then we can head down into the, the tidal reaches where we'll be fishing mainly on the, the colour changes with the runoffs where the floodplains, water off the floodplains, enters the main stream. Sounds all right to me. So we're actually going south in the East Alligator. That's all right, yeah. Well, Horace Greeley went west, young man. Uh, we're going south, uh, old men. Stick with us, folks. I'm sure you're going to have a ball in magnificent Kakadu. Hang around. Kakadu is Australia's largest national park. It covers approximately 20,000 square kilometres and is a World Heritage listed area for both its cultural and natural heritage. The park protects one of the finest and most extensive rock art collections in the world, along with an amazing array of plant and wildlife. Kakadu is renowned for its natural beauty and magnificent wetlands and the East Alligator River is no exception. It forms the border between Kakadu National Park and Arnhem Land. The best fishing on the river occurs after the wet season when the roads become accessible. Yeah, yeah, Rex. Good man. Not a bad fish, Rex. Oh, good fish. 60 centimetres. Oh, look at the shark after him there, Rex. Oh, shark. Yeah. Get away from him. Yeah. Well, didn't he snaffle that? Yeah, he's about 65 centimetres, I reckon, Rex. Very, really very nice fish. Wow. There he is, mate. What a beautiful fish. Hmm. Oh, there's nothing wrong with him, mate. Look at that, folks. Good on you, mate. Have a look at him. I tell you, he's in pretty fair nick, isn't he? He's got him more that one prong rod on the end of the snout. Yeah, look at that. I'll do the honours, mate. Yeah. There we go. Gonna hurt you at all, mate. Just want to get that out of you. Oh, what a lovely fish. A bit thicker through the body. He's been feeding well, I'd say, that boy. Yeah, he has, hasn't he? Yeah. I'll give him a little bit of a peck. Mm. You can pop him back there, mate. No worries. Very nicely done. Early in the morning on the floodplain. Early on the morning in the floodplain. Just on the turn of the tide. The magpie geese, the goannas. I think all nature's on my side. That's a beauty, Rex. Mind if I don't harmonise, though? You're very sincere, Phil. I know. You don't like me singing, do you? Well, mate, I don't, I'll refrain from commenting there. Let's, let's just go fishing. Thank you very much. Oh, he 
grab it there, Philip. You got there, mate. I don't know what I've got. It doesn't appear to be a barra. It's got some weight in it. That's a shark. A shark. You're joking. Like a whaler, mate. Yeah, a little river whaler. I felt a bump and I thought, look at that. That is quite amazing. On a lure. Yeah, he's eating that. Hasn't he eaten that? Oh, gee, mate, he's done the old doing the crocodile roll. The housewife and the canine doing the crocodile roll. So you call that a river whaler? Did yes, you? mate, yeah. Right around the back of the head's the best yeah, shot. Yeah, I think mate. it's. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do, Phil. You grip on him. I'll get my hand out of there for a minute. Yeah. Don't do this, kids. Yeah, they're dangerous little critters, these. Don't do it. Don't handle sharks. Dad, he can handle them. He can afford to lose his fingers. <laughs> Do you need your fingers for counting, kids? Look at that. Gee whiz. I thought it might be a barramundi. It's certainly not a barramundi. It's a whaler shark. Gee whiz, you just don't know what's below the surface, do you? No. Well, he's done a good job on that lure. If only we could sh talk shark. <laughs> There you, there you go, go there. Oh, yes, mate. Look, I wouldn't hurt you. Pardon me. <laughs> what have you been on the pickled onions? This bloke has every right to live his life. He's part of the environment. I tell you what, we might just put you down there, mate, and give you a little bit of a swim. Where are you going? Under the boat? Too right, he is. Go on, under you go. And he's gone. Well, a shark on a lure. How about that? Doesn't matter whether it's a shark or a barra, it's just nice being here, isn't it? And that's why we have the big heavy trace and the big long lure, because without it, shop. So the East Alligator, Philip, a pretty serious waterway. It's one of our bigger uh... Inland tidal rivers, Rex, yeah. Really works best just after the wet. There's an upper reach to it beyond the crossing. We might go and have a look at some of the very pretty country up there later into the rock hole. I know it's one of your favourite spots. It is, yeah. Well, is it a serious Barra River, this? Uh, this time of the year, it's very, it's uh, one of our more productive rivers. As you know, there's no commercial fishing allowed in uh, any of the Kakadu rivers, and there's only certain Kakadu waterways that are accessible to recreational fishermen. I've been all over the world. And I can tell you now, I'm absolutely elated because this is the very rare long stem prairie weed fish. Hang on, I'll get the net. Now look at that. Right, eh? Long stem prairie weed fish. I don't know whether it's the same that Joe Cocker indulges in, folks. It smells all right to me. Well done, Phil. It's a nice fish. Get out of there. No, it's only a rat. Good. Didn't he grab it? Beautiful. Mm. Just about under the boat again, Rex. Yeah, look at that. He's not going to get off, is he? Nah. <laughs> Very nicely done, Philip. Well, have a look at that. That is a perfect example of what we're talking about here. I'll lay him upside down and see if he'll sit there, just like Jimmy Allen does with the trout. And just get the hook out of him there. It's a barramundi, Phil, probably not even a year old. It'd be about a year old, Rex, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a bit about, we've been through the life cycle a lot of time, folks, but it's an interesting life cycle. Yeah, you hear people say, you know, the importance of a big wet season, a good wet season. If we have poor rains, what happens is that the little fish like this, which are spawned near the mouths of rivers, can't make it up into these crucial wetland habitats where uh, they're really barramundi nurseries, Rex. Yeah. If uh, the rain doesn't come uh, you know, heavy enough so that the inland billabongs link up, enabling passage through to them, 
the fish just are confined to a marine environment where predation is a major, a major negative impact on them. It certainly is. I'll just pop him back and let him swim again another day. Off you go, mate. Look a lot, at of that. These, lot of those little fish around. Yeah, there are. And that's what we've got at the moment, folks. A lot of little fish. I'm going to put a bit more sunscreen on, keep the water level up, keep the liquids going. And somewhere, sometime today, it'll happen. But barramundi fishing just ain't going out and hitting the jackpot. Some people do. They say it's easy. Well, it might be easy, but it's also very, very satisfying to be able to come here when the fish are off the bite and then show you people what persistence will do. The little barra, right from day one, they're predators. Let's hope Grandma and Grandpa aren't too far away. Gee, I tell you what, how's he feel? A uh, bit of weight about him, I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, Philip, who knows at this stage, not doing a lot. It's definitely a fish and a bit of a kick there. And one of them sharks. It might well be. But this has got a real thump, thump, thump about it. If I was fishing in Port Phillip Bay, I'd be saying Jewfish. Uh, no jewfish up here, I don't think, folks. I reckon this is a barramundi. Get some idea in a minute. Because he's heading across there into that area. You don't Ooh. want to jump. Here he comes. Oh, he's going to come up, is he? Yeah. Oh, look at this. He's going to come up. Not quite. But I reckon it's a barra. Yeah, it's a barra, all right. Oh, yeah, but sometimes, Phil, the, the, the nice-sized barra, they don't come out, do they? they? Often they don't, no. Come away from there. Yeah, we don't want him in that weed. Come out of there, I reckon he might he might go in there actually. We might have to up and come out of there. Oh, he's for, he oh look at that bow wave he's out a, there. He's a good oh, wacko! Hey, he's him, a right? serious fish, isn't he? He's a good one. Oh, gee, but didn't he do the right thing by us by going to the right instead of into that because he could have really made life difficult for us, folks. He, he's on a lure. He knows everything's not right because when he wants to go somewhere, he can feel this strain against him and he thinks, gee, I'm not quite so sure whether I want to be on Rex's show just yet. <laughs> he hit that like there was no tomorrow. Oh, look at that bow wave. Oh, serious fish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yibbity yibbity, folks. A serious fish. Look at that. A little bit of displacement, hey? Hmm. He's in that 10 kilo range, Rex, I reckon. Yeah, he's a serious fish. He is a serious barramundi. That's all right, lead him around that way. I just say again, folks, you've got to have a properly tuned drag because when the fish wants to go that way and the line is fully stretched, that's when breaking strain comes into it. Uh, she's all over Red Rover because the angler's patience is uh, down the gurgler. He's made a beautiful, beautiful start to this particular sauté. Eh? And all we want to do now is actually land him. And we're going to take our time, folks. Sit back and relax and just see how you can have so much enjoyment from angling these species and then putting them back for someone else to have the same fantastic enjoyment. He's certainly not done yet because, oh, he's a serious fish. He's serious fish, serious. When he goes down, we don't pull up. We hold him away from the boat and the motor. And he's probably got it. There he goes again. Gee, I tell you what, his tail is making some indentation into that water there, Philip. Yeah. You ever tire of this? No, never. Oh, it's... You know, I don't. That's why a lot of us have come to Darwin, Rex. Yeah. Well, after the footy, they all head up the Noosa and sit in there in the lounges on the beach in the G-strings, and Lynn and I come up here, mate, with the uh, barramundi lures. Look at that. Yeah. That is a serious, serious barramundi. Wacko. Oh. <laughs> it's not too bad at all, Rex. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, how good is that? And just hook too. And it's important, folks, too, some of our imported lures, not so much our local lures, which are right under the importance of having very strong hooks. We've got some Timsey hooks from overseas, and we just can't get through their thick skulls that we need some serious hooks for these magnificent fish. A barramundi. As I said, folks, I'm not saying how big it is. You just have a look for yourself. 
And this baby's going back because she's a female and she's going to produce millions of magnificent barramundi for you people all around the world. I tell you what, this is just sensational. Come on, baby. Look, she wants to go. She wants to go. You're going to go for me? Go on. It's Off right. she goes. I loved re-watching that classic old segment of Rex and Phil Hall catching fish up in the Northern Territory. Oh, and by the way, in case you can't hear it, while I was watching that segment, the rain has begun pattering down on the tin roof of my little studio here on the south coast of New South Wales. We're having our own bit of a wet season this year, and I think it's going to be really good for the fishing in the long run. But you know what's really interesting is that the intensity and the passion of the message that Rex was getting across 20, 30 years ago to people about looking after our fisheries, only taking what you need, releasing fish so that we could all fish for the future. A fantastic message. Sure, we've learnt a lot about fish handling since then, and we all do it a little bit better these days, I'd like to think. But Rex remains just as passionate today about looking after the fishing so that future generations can enjoy it as well. And that message has been picked up by those younger generations, including people like Shroom. I love watching Shroom segments on YouTube, and we're about to join him on Botany Bay in Sydney, chasing yellowtail kingfish. And there's some absolutely spectacular big fish encounters in this one. Watch it closely too, because it might contain the answer to that competition question that I'll be posing at the end of the night. And if you get it right, you might pick up that $100 gift voucher from BCF or one of those Ozfish hat and buff packs. But right now, Shroom's waiting for us out on Botany Bay. Over to you, mate. Our shared waterways have the most to offer. Let's practice stewardship. Oh, yeah. Guys, Botany Bay with Shui. Shroom at the point. With you and uh, down below we've got some squid we gathered earlier. Look at, all, look at all those nice little babies there. Probably got about half a dozen to about ten. It's kind of really exciting if it is on. If it, if it gets slammed, that's what I'm hoping for. Last time we were out here it was on. <laughs> yeah, wow. Whoa. Right, so we just pulled up. These are the liveys, just gonna transfer them to the water. There we go. Now stay healthy, babies. I'm gonna get a squid out for Stu. I've gotta get my rod out, but let's grab one of these. One of these, one of these squid there, guys. He's already rigged up. He's got a big, big single. Just over there through the back of the hood, that's how I'm gonna do it too. So, where's my rod? Let's go grab it. Grab it here. There we go, Catalina today, Saltiga. Because I got smoked last time on the 4000, so we're gonna be bigger. Heavier gear. And now for my squid. Let's go reel this guy in. There we go, look at the colors on this guy. Let's put him through the tail there, tail, through the back of the mantle. Let's make sure that goes all the way through and it holds. There we go. Jeez, what's, what's going on? There we go. That's it. That's the one. Live color. Swing nicely. Yeah, there we go. Now it's kind of dropping down with some 95 gram lead. There we go, we're on the bottom. It's wind. There we go, keep it off the bottom. Now we wait. That's the one. 
Nice one. Nice one, Shui. Oh, I'm on to Yep. Oh, Shui's on, guys, and I just got hooked up trying to film. Uh, how you going, Stewie? How's yours? How's yours going? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I gotta make sure I'm filming this. We got a king for sure. Oh, look at that. It's going real hard. We got 50 bound on today. We got the 50. There he is. Jeez, my handle's just come a bit loose. There he is. Get a wrap on the handle. Yes. Woo. Oh, it's yeah, boy. Yeah. Fist, fist bump. <laughs> fist bump. Oh. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Woo. Oh, Shui, that was our uh, first first two baits down, <laughs> and uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't master more. Straight into the bucket. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty big one. Well over legal. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Here's the other half of the fight, guys. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm bit. really happy with this one. Very, very nice. Yeah. Right after this, we had a bit of a brim bite come through. Mate across oh, from us really hooked onto better. a really nice Snap brim. But in no time, the kingfish were back. Stewie was first up. Pulling the hook on a good fish right at the boat. Next. I put a live squid down once again. And then this happened. Yeah, wow. Whoa, I had the rod in the wrong side of my hand. I hope so, I don't know. <laughs> oh. I was around the reef. Oh, I think you got me around the reef. I felt it wrap up. Darn! Darn! Yeah. Oh, freeze! Oh my gosh! Oh no! Wow! That was a big fish. Incredible! That was a big hit. That was a big fish. See if he comes out. I don't think he's gonna come out, but that might just be reef now. If he's still locked in there, he might untangle himself. Yep, yep, yep. He's back. Oh no! Oh, I thought he was just out. Lost everything. Wow, that's the way it goes. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Too good, that fish. Now he's getting the live squid back out. Let's get Stewie one first while I get set up. Here you go, Stewie. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a squid. Hopefully that becomes, converts into a king. Yeah. Would be nice. Look at yeah, that. Right oh, it just top, changed yeah, color. Perfect. That's the way. I'm going to drop it down now. There he goes. There he goes, right down. Always a chance. Yeah, always a chance, huh? Oh, yeah. Nice one, Chewie. Yes. 
for battle. Good stuff, Shui. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Alright. Oh, yeah. If we still got two strips, maybe we can make it happen. Maybe. By this stage, we were seriously running out of bait. His yakka is about to be hit by a king. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Wow. Oh. Straight away. No? Straight away. I thought he had it. Straight away. Hey, there's not many pin yakas left. Yeah. You got it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Gotta get him off the bottom, I knew the bottom. You gotta get... Oh my god, this guy's got... Yeah! Gotta put some grunt in there. Monster. Sorry, but it's, I'm getting tired. Ah, ah, I'm getting tired here. Why is it so hard? Is he? No, it's not. That's not even a king. He is, he's a king, but why has he gone so hard? Yeah. Nice yeah. <laughs> Guys, here's a shot. <laughs> and that's how we can fish sustainably, so aim to be a steward of your waterway today. With a little less plastic. <laughs> wow, don't those kingies go hard? I don't think there are too many other fish that pull quite as hard on a kilo for kilo basis as yellowtail kingfish. But some great messages in there as well about fish handling and looking after your catch. We're going to go from big strong fish to a little interesting fish now because we're going to join Robbie Alexander on one of his little creeks down in northern Victoria and he's chasing a fish that I find absolutely fascinating. I've got to admit I've actually never caught one and I would love to and that's a freshwater blackfish also known as a slippery. Now Robbie is targeting them with circle hooks so that he doesn't hook them too deeply. This is a really interesting segment. Oh, and it might also contain the answer to the question that you'll need to know to win our prizes at the end of the night, so watch carefully. Blackfish are a small native fish that live in these mountain streams and they're sometimes called greasies because they're really greasy and slippery to hold. They're mostly nocturnal, they will feed during the day but they uh, they feed best on sunrise and sunset and throughout the night. They're also a fish that there's a lot that is still unknown about them. There's been a lot of research going into trout cod and Macquarie perch and Murray cod and the larger freshwater species, but the blackfish, there's still quite a lot to discover about them. For example, why do the blackfish here on the northern side of the Great Dividing Range grow to around 30 or 35 centimetres maximum, whereas the same genus and species of fish on the southern side of the Great Dividing Range, they grow to four or five pound. Why is that so? I don't know. That's why I said there's still a lot of research that has to be done. But one thing I do know about the blackfish, even though they're small, they're a lot of fun to catch on twilight or on sunset in these small streams. Now, where I am tonight, up here, I fished in this spot before for blackfish and I've done quite well. The water's quite off colour thanks to recent rain, which means that I could pick up a trout as a bycatch. I'm using a small circle hook and a tiny little sinker the size of a pea rigged on a Paternoster rig. But blackfish are notorious for swallowing the hooks and getting hooked quite deep, and I'm hoping that the circle hooks might prevent that. So, folks, tonight... I'm going black fishing with circle hooks. Now I'm gonna go and get some air guard and spray myself, get a worm on the hook and get my line in. Now hopefully I didn't get too much air guard on my hands, but I just went and rubbed a heap of dry dirt and dust on them and rubbed them through the grass to try and mask the air guard smell. Anyway, I've been getting some advice on circle hooks from the guys at hardcorecirclehookusers.com 
and they've told me that the biggest mistake people make is not leaving the hook ex the tip exposed. I need to leave the tip exposed. So I'm going to put this worm on here, but I've got to remember to leave the tip exposed. I might just leave it like that and just see what happens. I'll just go with one worm and see how that goes. I mean, I'll put a second one on, why not? I've got the big, fat, juicy Jan Jack worms on here. I'll leave one really stuck to the hook. And I'll just pin this one through a couple of times with most of it, uh, most of it wiggling still. I can't even see the tip. All right, there's my double Jan, my Jan Jack daily double with the, the point of the circle hook exposed. This is what all the, uh, the lovers of circle hooks have told me I need to do. Now I don't usually use a pattern Oster rig, I usually use a split shot sinker crimped up the line about 30 centimetres from my hook. But with the rain lately and the water being a bit higher than normal, I've gone for a, uh, a pattern Oster rig just so that I can have that bigger sinker than a split shot. He's playing with it there now. Got him. Here we go. There's my first blackfish for the night. It's not even dark yet. The sun's still out on the treetops. And he is lip hooked thanks to the circle hook. That makes me happy. I'm going to get a photo of my little blackie and then I'll put him back. I don't know how that photo came out, but there's my little blackfish. See you later, mate. I'm on the board and the sun's still out on the treetops. That's a great sign. All right, now I've just put a fresh worm on. I'm going to put that back out where it was. Oops, wasn't that far over, Robert. It was about the middle. That'll do. And I'm going to check out that photo I just took and see whether it's any good. I should have bought one of my good cameras with me. As I sit here just waiting for a bite, I can hear a whip bird in one of the trees nearby. Eastern whip bird. It's got to be one of the nicest sounds in nature. And look at this, here's a bite. I love the sound of the eastern whip bird. Such an amazing sound. I can't mimic it. Here we go. Got him. <laughs> There he goes, did you hear the whip bird in the background then? I hope the camera picked that up. Another little weenie. Another little weenie blackfish and he is lip hooked. I'm really liking this. I haven't been overly impressed with the circle hooks. But this is impressing me. This is good. This is good. Lovely little blackfish. See you later mate. I'm going to leave my camera filming for a couple of minutes to see if I can capture those whip bird sounds. Didn't take long. Got him. Oh, look at the size of him. Wow, that is so small. And even a, a, a blackfish that small, I've got a bit of a tangle going on here. Even a blackfish that tiny can be hooked on a circle hook. That's really cool to know. See you later, mate. So I'm just swimming around with this here. I'm going to catch this fish, I reckon. Got him. A bit bigger, this one. Quite a bit bigger. Is he, look, is he lip hooked again? I well, know he's got it down. He's got it down quite a fair way, actually. He's going to, I'm going to have to break the line for this one. That's disappointing. But anyway. That's got to be up around the 28 to 29 centimetre mark, that one, I think. I've broken the line... Unfortunately, he wasn't lip hooked. See you later, mate. He'll dislodge that. A friend of mine took one home and put it in a fish tank. He caught it like that and he cut the line. And rather than putting it back into a creek, he put it in a bucket, took it home and put it in the fish tank. 
and the next day he said he couldn't believe it but the hook was laying in the bottom of the tank the blackfish managed to get it out all by itself during the night and he has no idea how just one of the many fascinating things about fish I guess I was hoping that wouldn't happen but it has but so far of the four or five fish that I've caught they've all been lip hooked bar one and I think that's a, a vast improvement on a normal bait holder hook very impressed with the uh, circle hooks for blackfish fishing got him another tiny weeny one how healthy is this little creek wow it's not even dark yet they're just going nuts so many of these tiny little blackfish in here now here in northeast victoria there's two types of freshwater blackfish there's the common blackfish which is these ones and there's the two spined blackfish now a stand to be corrected i haven't got phone service here so i can't confirm but i think the common blackfish this one here is called gadopsis marmoratus and the upland or the sorry the two spined is gadopsis bispinosus now the two spined blackfish they're found in more rocky areas rocky pools big deep pools with lots of rocks i like to hide in the cracks of rocks and live in rocky areas these guys the common blackfish they're found more in snaggy areas in usually in the slower reaches of these upland streams down downstream a little bit usually you get the uh, in a say a creek like this you get the two spine blackfish up up that way further upstream further where it's rockier and faster flowing and you'll get the uh, common blackfish down here in the deeper pools where there's a lot more snags not so many rocks they both grow to a similar size they usually max out at around 30 to 35 centimeters but they are but there are two species here and this is the one that's much more common the uh the common hence the name common blackfish he's pulling he's there he's there he's pecking away got him another tiny weeny little tiddler this one's a bit bigger than the last one though This one's a little bit bigger. This one's up around the 12 to 13 centimetre mark. See you later, mate. I've caught four on the one worm. It's more of a worm patty now, but I'll leave it in there for a little bit longer and see if I can get five on the one worm. There's sort of not much point in putting fresh worms on if the worm you've got on is still working. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, still going for worm number five. Got him. I got got blackfish number five on the same worm. <laughs> He's a little bit big. He's very fat. Must be plenty of food down there for them. We've had a wet spring and a, and a wet start to summer. And I just wonder whether that's what's uh maybe it's washed lots of worms and stuff in for them. And who you knows? See you later, mate. All right, have I got enough worm on? Have I got enough worm on me hook to try and catch number six? It's dwindling, but I'm going to give it a crack. <laughs> like I said, I haven't caught these fish on Janjuk worms. I've caught them on Janjuk worm. I love this. I'm having so much fun. I'd like to see a few larger ones. I got that one bigger one earlier. That was a, a nice fish. Got him. <laughs> He's probably 13 or 14 centimetres. He's not as small as some of the tiddlers, but look, look at he got off. Blackfish number six off that worm and probably, I don't know, nine or ten all up. See you later, mate. I reckon I might put on a fresh worm. See if I can get another half a dozen. <laughs> Platypus. Did you see it go down there? I just had a platypus swim past. That's really cool. Blackfish fishing. 
Oh, I love it. Some people might not like it. It's not the sort of fishing you'd choose if you love the sound of a squealing drag, because they're all small. On the southern side of the Great Dividing Range, they, they're bigger. They grow to four or five pound. But here in northern or northeast Victoria, a big blackfish is anything over 30 centimetres. But it is a fantastic way to go fishing. It's fun, it's relaxing, and it's enjoyable. And it's a great way to wet a line and observe nature at the same time. I've seen an abundance of wildlife tonight, and it's been wonderful. Now... Recently I purchased some circle hooks. I've tried them on yellow belly, redfin and carp and I haven't been sold on them. I've found the hookup rate to be really bad. But tonight I actually found a use that I really, really like. They are amazing hooks to use when you're blackfish fishing. I've probably caught 12 or 15 blackfish in this twilight period. Only one of them needed the hook to be cut off. The rest of them I was able to unhook and throw back because they were all hooked in the lip. That is a, an enormous improvement on most black fishing sessions. Such interesting fish, those freshwater blackfish, and obviously quite prolific where Robbie was fishing. Great to see him using the circle hooks and being able to safely release most of them too. And as you can probably hear, the rain's still pattering down on my tin roof here in the studio. Now we're about to reach the climax of the night and really talk a little bit more about Ozfish Unlimited and the messages that they try and get across to anglers, as well as looking after habitat, looking after the fish. And who better to share that message with us than Jonathan Bleakley, who works for Ozfish Unlimited. He's a great young guy. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel as well and produces some wonderful footage. But tonight he's monitoring the Ozfish Unlimited YouTube channel and you can chat with him live. Now, I'll let you in on a secret. The answer to the competition question is in this final segment. This is a segment about best practices for handling fish when you intend to let them go to optimise their chances of survival. So let's cross over to Jono right now, hear a little bit more about Ozfish and then see this clip on best practices for handling fish. Over to you Jono. Well thanks Starlo, it's fantastic to be on one of these fishing hubs. I must admit I was tuning into every single one last year and absolutely loved them but I'm super pumped that fish handling has made the agenda for the first one in 2022. Now uh, for those who don't know me, Jonathan's my name and I'm lucky enough to be involved in uh, a fantastic organisation in Ozfish Unlimited. Now as a younger lad, a younger fisherman out there and Steve, I'm not looking at you by any means. I don't think you'll mind me saying that one. Um, I'm super passionate about communicating those really important messages when it comes to the issues that our fish are facing, but also what Ozfish and organizations like Ozfish can do about it. So that's my goal for the next minute and a half or so. I'm going to break down who Ozfish is and exactly what they can do for our fish out in our local waterways. Now, if you haven't heard them, heard of them, I should say, you've probably seen them at a local BCF, or maybe a video has popped up on social media at some point. But uh, in its simplest form, Ozfish is a conservation movement. Their goal is to protect and restore fish habitat across Australia. And we all love our fish, and we all want to make sure fishing is around well into the future. Now, how they operate is through chapters, which is basically a group of wreck fishos, both men and women and kids at that, in an, an any given local waterway across the country who come together and agree that they want to do something about the fish populations or the habitat in that particular area. What they do then is come to Ozfish at Ozfish HQ and say, hey, I want to get involved and I want to do something about it. And then it's up to us to equip them with everything they need to get habitat restoration projects up and running. So I'm talking everything from insurance, marketing assistance, research assistance, access to scientists and universities all across Australia, supplies, whether they be big or small, you name it, Ozfish is there to get you guys in your local waterways set up to do something about some of the issues we are facing. Now this can be uh, in, in many different forms. Some chapters around Australia enjoy nothing more than getting a beer at the local pub once a week or maybe fortnightly and chatting about the waterway just to get a bit of a better idea on how it's going and maybe some of the issues it's facing. 
to be honest. Nothing better than a palmy and a beer on a Thursday night. But some of the other chapters around are taking it to the next level. Over in Western Australia, South Australia and up in Moreton Bay, those chapters are leading the country in community-driven restoration projects. I'll explain a little bit for you. So in Moreton Bay, there was a group of community members that uh, noticed that Moreton Bay shellfish reef populations had dropped in the last 10 or 20 years. So they decided to go around to the local restaurants, collect as many oyster shells as they could and start storing them at the Ozfish Shellfish Restoration Facility. They would then clean them and dry them and let them dry out in the sun with the help of local schools, I should say, and community organisations. And then Ozfish would come in, pack them into baskets or ROBs as we call them and drop them out into the bay. Over in South Australia and Western Australia, a similar project is happening, but that's focused on the local seagrass meadows. Now, the community realised that the seagrass seeds were getting dislodged when uh, a strong wind or tide or storm surge would come through and they were being wasted as they got washed up on the local beaches. So what Ozfish did, working alongside community organisations and the local chapter, was take those seeds, harvest them in tanks, and then replant them back into the areas where they lost, all in a bid to recreate and replant or re-establish, if you will, the local seagrass meadows, which is so important for things like snapper, squid, King George whiting, you name it. I mean, you take your pick, if it's a beer, that's fine, and it's just chatting about your waterway, or if it's getting involved in some of the biggest projects in the country, then that is fine also. If this something sounds like something you're interested in, I really want to see a few of you guys pop up on the chapter list at Ozfish HQ. I reckon a few people that are watching this know a bit about their local waterways that could go a long, long way in helping the local fish populations. Now, the other side of Ozfish is what we call empowering us as fishers to be stewards of our waterway. And what this means is basically trying to educate the average recreational angler down at the boat ramp to protect not only the fish when it hasn't been caught, but when it finally hits the deck to know what to do about it. And what I'm referring to there, of course, is what Starlow's touched on and uh, what Rex was doing all those years ago is correct fish handling practices. Now, I could sit here and talk about it for a while, but I think the best way to communicate this message is uh, through viewing a fishing session of its own and I was lucky enough to be joined by Dan Gilfoyle, a local Hunter Ozfish chapter member in Lake Macquarie, which I must admit is only a stone's throw from here. And uh, we went out there to see if we could target a range of different species on a range of different techniques and then employ a range of different fish handling techniques to make sure they swimmed off in the best possible way. I'm going to stop talking and the video is about to play, but keep an eye out because that prize that Steve's been referring to well, the, uh, the answer to that question you will find in this video. So watch closely and uh, we'll see Steve on the other side. Today, Dan and I are heading out on our local waterway, Lake Macquarie. You ready, mate? Let's roll. Let's do it. Dan and I have been fishing together for a long time and have built an appreciation for not just landing that fish, but making sure that it swims off in the best possible condition. What a sunrise. What are you throwing? Vibe? Yeah, a little 70 mil vibe, mate. I might join you. <sighs> Today, the plan is simple. To head out and see if we can catch a few different species on a range of different techniques. For us, fishing is a sport. We spend the night before planning on where we'll go, focus our attention during the day on where the fish are sitting, and then work in overdrive to make sure anything we catch is released back into the water. So yeah, I started catch and release fishing simply because I don't like to eat seafood. But as I got a bit older, I started to realise that if I want to keep catching these fish in the future, I've got to look after them, handle them correctly and put them back. This type of fishing may be hard for some to get their head around, but once you pick it up, my god it's fun. So I'm a bit younger than Dan, he's been fishing these waters far longer than I have. And I was actually born into an age where catch and release fishing is starting to take over that old mentality of kill everything you catch. How many fish you could fit into an esky has suddenly been replaced by the quality of a photo of your fish or how many fish you were able to release that day. And uh, I must admit, I'm proud to be a part of that group that's moving in that new direction. I'll tell you what, when it comes to a nice flathead, Dan, you're on the net. Boom, there he is. High five. Nice, mate. That's a good fish. Right, well, let's, let's put this fish 
in front of the camera and show you what a nice flathead looks like. I've got a glove here, which is nearly an essential these days, really, if you're chasing flathead. So it's like a, it's got a bit of a protective layer here and then it's, we always wet it, so dip it into the water. So it's nice and wet. And then just a nice, tight, firm hold in there. And that hook pops straight out, which is excellent, which is why we use those single hooks. And then uh, that's a beautiful fish. So Dan, in terms of watching out for the spikes, what am I looking for here? So you got the two big gill rakers at the back of the head here. They're the most dangerous ones. Obviously the really sharp teeth on the flatties, they'll get you as well, so you want to avoid those. And there's one at the top there, isn't there? Yeah, you got one just in front of the, the top dorsal fin here. Yeah. That's pretty lethal. A flathead of this size is always going to be put back in the water. But that doesn't mean we can't take a few things for the memory bank, which for us is usually a photo and a quick measure. Right, we've given that flathead a bit of a swim and I'm actually interested to see how long it is. So Dan's got a brag mat there. He's going to dip it in the water. It's really important to wet that. Why is that, Dan? You don't want to... You just don't want to take away their protective slime. Yep. You've got a layer of slime that... So we put that out. fish on and when we slide it up, it's just going to slide really easily and we don't want that to take off the, uh, the slime that Dan said. So what do you got? We're zero at the end there? Yep. And we're at uh, 56 and a half. That's not a bad fish. It's a... It's a nice way to kick off a session and uh, we're not going to leave that on the mat for too long. It's overcast today but if it was hot, that mat, especially if you've got a black one, can heat up really, really quickly. So, time to, time to let it go. In, yep. Sounds good. I can get my thumb. See you mate. Oh, there he goes, down to the depths. So I'm a part of a flathead tagging program out here on the lake. It consists of 10 other anglers and we've been doing it for four years now. Tagged over 650 dusky flathead over that 70 centimetre mark. One of the fish in, in particular I tagged has been recaptured three times again by myself and a fourth time by another angler. So it just goes to show that they are really resilient if you look after them and handle them correctly, put them back in the water, they'll be out there for someone else to enjoy another time. When it comes to fish handling, it's it's not overly complicated. It's it's just a matter of a few basic principles for when you ever have any fish on board, whether it be a really quality fish or even just one of those smaller size fish that might just be legal. You know, don't use lip grips. They're no good for the fish's mouths. They bruise it and pierce it. You know, wet your brag mats, your gloves and your rags. You don't want to take off any of that protective slime. And try use those nets, those rubber nets that have quite big holes in them, not only for your convenience when getting trebles out, but also so they don't uh, rub up against the fish and damage whether it be their eye or their skin. So you take those three principles in any fishing scenario and you're doing the fish a favour. When you throw small lures around, you're a chance of small fish. Now this guy, of course, I've got a lot of growing to do yet. Very, very small snapper or pinky or squire, they might call him, and he's gonna go offshore and grow, hopefully to 10, 11, or maybe one day even 12 kilos, fingers crossed. But it's good to see them in Lake Macquarie, which is where we are today. And uh, I'm actually gonna, oh, hang on. What's this? <laughs> these are these parasites the fish get in here, and it's really important to make sure you take these off. They leave the fish with big sores. All right. So make sure you take them off and kill them. So it grows on the fish and it le it's left like a little bit of a mark there. Yeah, you can see it already leaving a saw now. They'll, they'll attach themselves to these fish and they just, yeah, they just give them grief. Assessing the quality of a waterway can be difficult. Catching a big fish can be a great indication that the anglers in the past have done their part to release it if it's previously been caught. Catching smaller fish, however, and a range of them, can be a great indication that there is sufficient habitat around to support those numbers. Today, we were lucky enough to see the best of both worlds, which a range of smaller species in the morning, and then this in the afternoon. Got him on, Dan? Yeah. Got a nice fish here. Here he goes. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna go get the net, because you're going that way. <laughs> Head shakes? Yep. You've caught a lot of these fish. Is that basically an indication that you've got on a mile away? Yeah, the head shakes and the, the big arc it took when it first grabbed the lure. Yeah. So it grabbed it out there and kind of did a, a yeah, big wrap they, around. They don't, they don't always scream off at 100 mile an hour. You'll, you'll, they'll grab the lure and they'll, they'll take an arc left or right. It doesn't really yeah. matter which way. And they'll go deep, take that arc, and then once they've realised that there's something not quite right with what they've just eaten, yep. they'll, then they'll take off. I'm going to get the net ready. I've got the gloves, the pliers, and a rag there ready to go for when it hits the deck. And I'm going to leave Dan to do uh, 
what he does best. <laughs> Silver flash that I saw down in the water. We can barely see two or three metres, but here he is. Lake Macquarie, Dan Gilfoyle, come to me. Oh, <laughs> yes. Put it there. How you feel? Pretty good, mate. That's what we're after. My goodness, that is a cracking Lake Macquarie mull away. Dewfish as they were commonly caught. And have a look at how easy that slides straight out of this net. That's okay. why we use these ones. How good is that? Wait, Dan, let's get it up and uh, have a look at it. No worries. There we go. So you got your right hand underneath his belly, supporting the weight. Dan, how heavy? How many kilos you reckon? Oh, this thing would be probably five kilos, six kilos maybe. Beautiful. And then this hand, you're not in its gills, are you? You're not. No, you don't not... want to put your hands in the gills, just under the gills there. Yeah, that's beautiful. So two nice, clean holds of the fish. Now, in terms of getting that hook out, it hasn't popped out yet, so I'm going to get the pliers, which is just here, and we're not going to dig at it or anything. It might even pull out just ever so gently. There we go. Look at that. He's just sitting on it. So barely any um, pulling or yanking at that lure, which is so important when you get a mull away like this. We've said before, they're the kingpin of the estuary, and we want to make sure that we can keep catching them into the future. So. Nice uh, hook release. We can use a rag there if we need. We're gonna get him straight back in the water, but not before a quick photo. Yeah, <laughs> How's that sound? Whilst Dan and I have been lucky enough to catch lots of fish over the years, any time you can catch one in the middle of the day on a lure is a reason to celebrate. From the moment a fish like this hits the deck, we're doing everything we can to make sure it swims off healthy. A couple photos, a measure, and a tag if you wish is about all a fish like this can handle before it needs another swim. And now uh, time to get it back into the water. Right, yeah, let's do this. Catching a fish is all well and good, and, and don't get me wrong, that's certainly the fun part when it comes to fishing, but watching it swim off to where it came from, and that somewhat seals the deal for me. If I can catch it, get a photo, put it back in the water, and then watch it go back to the habitat where it came from, then uh, that's job done. Good stuff and some great messages in that segment from Dan and Jono. And now the part of the night that you've been waiting for. I'm going to pose the question that you have to be able to answer correctly to be in the running to win one of our prizes. And that question is, what was the length of the dusky flathead that Dan and Jono opened their account with on Lake Macquarie? How long was that fish? You need to type the answer into the chat now. And I can see some coming in already. All right. However many correct ones we get across the five channels that you're watching this on, we'll put them all together. And John, I'll put them all in a hat tomorrow and pull one out. And on the Ozfish Unlimited Facebook page, he'll announce the winners. He might even make a little video of drawing them out just to make it exciting. So how long was that flathead that they caught to kick off their great session on Lake Macquarie and you only got until the end of the stream in a few seconds to get your answer in there so don't muck around. Look it's been fantastic to have you all on board tonight and it's been especially pleasing to team up with Ozfish Unlimited. I've been an ambassador of theirs for several years now and I really love the work they do. I love getting out there into the field and seeing what they're doing to help restore fish habitat and produce more fish for people like you and me to catch take a couple for a feed by all means but put back into the water anything you don't need and try and optimize the chances of the survival of those fish that you release you've had plenty of tips tonight on how to best do that i'm not sure when we'll do the next hub we might do one next month we might wait a month or two let us know what you want to see do you want to see one every month do you want to see them more frequently we quite enjoy doing them but there's a fair bit of work in it as you can imagine but just let us know what you think about the fishing hub. It's been wonderful to catch up with you all again. It's been too long. I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year, and I hope you're catching a few fish. You only got a couple of seconds to get your answers in there. How long was that dusky flat? Oh, they're piling in. <laughs> and I'm just looking at it on my Starlo Gets Real channel. We've got all the other channels out there as well. You'll know who won by tomorrow. The rain's still pattering down. I'm looking forward to having a fish over the next couple of days. I hope you are as well. Until we catch up next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. <laughs>